Hello there and welcome back. This is Sneak Bruce, one of the developers of the By Chance Level Generation Framework. And today we're going to take a closer look at one of the at some of the more advanced features of the level generation framework. Um, namely stuff like filling your level with game objects like enemies and items and some of the post-processing you can apply. The last time we've been talking about um, how to generate a game level and um, let's let me just um, fill you in what we've been doing last time. There's our, our example scene which just contains um, a single level generator. This level generator uses a chunk library currently consisting of four chunks for generating our game level and um, each of these chunks has a nice sprite and some contexts specifying where to align these chunks to other parts of your existing level. So today we are going to take a look at anchors. These anchors are um, points inside of your chunks where the framework is allowed to put additional stuff like um, yeah like enemies or obstacles. So taking a look at this at this chunk template you can just click the add anchor button and um, a new anchor will be added at the very center of the of, of the chunk template and you can move these around with editor handles just as you like and let's add a second one here and you can tag these anchors. In order to be able to tag these anchors, um, you have to define some tags. So defining tags for the by chance framework can be done with the by chance tag manager. And as you can see, there are already some tags defined for the showcase, four of which are for anchors called player, crawler, boss, and obstacle. You can even specify a color to highlight these anchors in the, in the scene view. And we're going to use these in a minute for filling our levels with game objects. So let's get back to our chunk template and say that the first one should should be used to spawn a crawler, some kind of enemy. Note how the, the sphere changes its, its color to red. And the other one should be used to spawn an obstacle, changing its color to green. Now hit apply and save project. And the last thing we need to do is to tell the framework how to connect these anchors to your actual game objects. And this is, can be easily done by um, adding a fill anchor script to your level generator. And with this fill anchor script, you can specify a tag of the anchor to be filled, for instance, crawler. And you can specify a range of prefabs that may or may not be used to fill this anchor with different probabilities. For instance, we can say, okay, for this one, we want to, to use our crawler prefab from our showcase with 100% probability and remove the other two. And we can add another fill anchor script for adding obstacles to our level. And let's say we want to have this block here with 0.6 probability and this nice companion cube block here with 0.2 probability, meaning that with 20% probability this anchor will be empty every time. Um, yeah, so that's basically it. Just save the scene and um, let's take a look at how the generated levels are going to look like now. So let's hope we've got at least one of our rooms. No, we don't actually. <laughs> so let's try again. This the thing about random, <clears throat> about random. Um, you can never be sure that the thing you want to see will be there. Mm. Okay, th so there's a crawler. It's just not visible because the the Z uh, the Z coordinate is off. Let me just um, fix this. There you go. There's a small body. And um, right now there's exception in the in, in the console, but this is just because the the rest of the game logic is missing. This this has uh, nothing to do with the actual framework. And um, 
Yeah, so there you go. And as you can see, there no obstacle has been spawned. So let's just give this another try and let's see if there an obstacle will be spawned and which one. Maybe let's just increase the size of the generated level a bit. Um, just to be sure that we have a higher probability of seeing the stuff we want to see. And now, as you can see, there actually is, oops, there is an obstacle, and it's this one. So, um, yeah, that's it for the anchors. Um, what you can also do, and which is just as important, is uh, filling your context as well. So, in most games, you want to fill these contexts, um, for instance, with a wall. If this context is blocked and not being used for connect this room for connecting this room to another room, you want to insert a wall here, for instance. And um, this can be done almost exactly the same way. Just let's just take a look at this. Um, right now, our, all of our contexts don't have any tag, but um, if you remember our tag manager, there was uh, a single context tag defined, and this was the door tag. And right now I'm going to tag all of our contexts with the door tag. And now we can return to our level generator and add a fill context script, specifying that the door contexts should be filled. And we can specify two different prefabs here. One in case the context is aligned, so there is, for instance, a door at this place, and one if this context is discarded, so um, if this context is not being used. We are going to talk about a discarding context in a minute. Let me just insert a, a, red, a red door at, um, at this place for being aligned. This doesn't make much sense, but it will illustrate very well how, this, um, how the concept works. And um, if we fire up a level generator now, we are going to see red doors at, um, at aligned contexts. So, um, we've been talking about discarding context, and this immediately leads to the concept of post processing applied to our level. By chance comes with a, with a whole lot of post-processing effects, and one of which is the discard open contexts policy. The discard open context policy says, okay, if um, if any chunk template of a specific type has any of its context discarded, for instance, because it is at the at the border. Um, of the level, or if there's uh, just no other game chunk fitting there, then the context should be discarded. So let me just add discard open context policies for some of our templates and change our fill anchor script to something that makes a little more th uh, sense setting the using the blocked sprite for blocked contexts. And let's take a look at it again. Uh, yeah, now as you can see over here, there is a blocked context which has been filled with a with a with a red door. The rotation is a little off, so um, you can you can specify the context rotations as well. Um, just so you know. So this is this is um, some some tuning you you need to do for each of your games yourself. Um, another thing that you can add to your level generator is the um, the by the by chance um, align adjacent contexts script. This will align all of your contexts if they are nearby but are not connected and. Let's see if we can find a little example for this. We're going to return to our showcase scene here. And um, as you can see, 
there are many post-processing scripts applied here, one of which is these uh, in this line adjacent context script. And I hope I can find a small example where this makes sense to illustrate this. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I think they maybe this one should be should be a, a, a nice place. Imagine the level generation framework started out somewhere at the top and grow, has grown the level towards the bottom, and um, it might be that it added this building block here, then this building block after, growing here and here, and adding this one at last. So in this case, these two contexts are next to each other. They are supposed to be aligned, inserting a door for instance, but obviously they won't be because the level generation framework added the chunks around this, this door. And to be these two guys to be connected, you can add the script that I've been just mentioning, this um, align adjacent context script, and then you are able to pass here. So you, you can, as you can see, these are the colliders generated. You can pass through this door. Finally, let's talk um, about some of the stuff you can do with uh, with the level generator itself, specifying some additional properties. Let's just return to our demo scene real quick, and. Um, here, first, the first thing you might want to do is to specify the initial chunk. You might have noticed that some of our levels were very small, most likely because it started out with our um, template with only one context and um, adding another one, blocking the rest of the level. So let's just say we always want to have this guy here as our very first um, level generation block to increase the probability of generating um, feasible levels. And this can easily be done by dragging one of our templates, chunk templates, into the initial chunk property of our level generator. And um, let me remove all the distracting stuff real quick. So now with the, with the initial chunk um, property set, we can fire up the level generator again. And as you can see, the levels are far bigger. Plus, the first one is our room 01, which has been assigned to the initial chunk property. Let me do this again. And there you go. So, this is the first thing. The next thing is, if you're interested in the level, pro, um, level generation process or want to, to enable or to, to make debugging easier, even later at production, you can tick this little lock level generation box and the level generation framework will lock all of its steps for you to take a look at if you have trouble understanding what's happening there. Note that this might increase the duration of the level generation a lot because level uh, because logging is quite expensive as uh, all type of file IO is. But as you can see now, there's a log that says, okay, this is by chance for Unity version 1.2. Our initial level is one chunk. We have four chunk templates available. We have a seed specified here. And after that, it says, okay, I'm expanding the level at this context. I found one feasible candidate to put there. And um, I've been, I'm gonna, going to add a, a chunk with ID 0 to the level, and this is this one actually. Next, I'm going to expand the level at this context, found a one candidate again, and I'm going, going to add a chunk with the ID 2 to the level, and this is this one. And finally, it's going to print some, um, yeah, some kind of distribution, excluding the initial chunk. Um, just to make sure that you know, um, yeah, you know which chunk has been added how often. Talking about the seed, um, as you can see, the log file prints a seed to the to the Unity log, 
and sometimes you might like a level very very much or you might want to use this level generator to, to expand your content at runtime just like the original Elite game did for instance and um, you can do so by saving the seed or copying it and storing it somewhere and let's take a quick look at this, this level we've got many rules of this type at the top and many rules of this type at the bottom and this room at the bottom right and um, now let's just set the seed property of our level generator save the scene and start the process again and note that the residing level looks exactly the same way as did the previous one okay so now you've learned how to integrate the by chance framework into your game and um, how to create levels the way you want them to be. I'd highly recommend to take a look at, um, at the example scene um, provided with the framework to get a deep understanding of how everything's tied together. For instance, which other post-processing um, algorithms can be applied here. And um, yeah, if you're a coder and you need to extend the ByChance framework, the framework itself is completely open source and um, is included here and you might want to be interested in the um, in the framework script core level generator um, just to give you a head start of where to look if you should run into any issues just um, head over to our issue tracker and we'll be happy to help you can ask questions there as well obviously and yeah thank you for listening see you soon